I've taken our Danish pastry out of the refrigerator. You can see it's fighting to get out of the plastic wrap. So let's give it its freedom. Unwrap it. Okay. Now, I told you that there's many things that you can do with Danish pastry dough. You can make Danish, of course. You can make croissants. You can make sticky buns, cinnamon buns, coffee cakes. The list is really very, very long. I'm going to show you a few different things today. I'm only going to show you demonstrations. I'm not going to do the whole dough in one thing. I'm going to do separate parts to show you different examples of what you can do. So I'm going to cut off a piece of this. Rewrap this. Put it off to the side. And now, I'm going to flour my board. You can see that there's many, many, many layers of dough and butter here. These are all those flaky layers. So we're going to make some donuts. I've got a rolling pin, and now we're going to roll this out. Again, I told you I'm only demonstrating, so I'm going to only do a, a couple of each thing. And. So that's, let me see, one, two, okay, I can get two donuts and a couple of donut holes out of this. And if you're familiar with the craze going through New York City right now, there's a French baker who owns a bakery there, and he created something that's a, a cross between a croissant and a donut, and everybody's going crazy, and he's charging $5 for one of these. And uh, this is my version. So now I'm going to take a round cutter. Just make a nice round circle, two of them. Unfortunately, you can't really reuse that dough. It doesn't take well to roll in a second time. Cut out a hole, so now we have a donut and a donut hole. Do the same thing with this one. And now we're going to put these off to the side, and they're going to have to rise for an hour to two hours. So while they're rising, we'll make something else. I'll get more of my dough, and now we'll make some Danish. Put that over there. Okay, same thing, except we're going to roll the dough a little bit thinner for the Danish. And what I would ideally like to get is five inch squares. So, okay. handy dandy. To be a little bit longer. Okay, that's now the other way. So we need that's our ten. We need to get five. Wear it off. I want this to be nice and square. Just touch more. I'm going to show you how to make two different kinds of Danish. Some fillings. I have a cream cheese filling, which is a nice, like that you would find in a regular Danish, and the recipe will be on our website. And it's cream cheese and sugar and vanilla and a little bit of lemon zest 
And then I also have here uh, a raspberry pie filling. Now the first thing we're going to make is one of my favorites, which is called the pinwheel. So I'm going to cut the corners about two inches in on all four edges. I'm going to take some of our cream cheese filling, nice good dollop of it. Just keep it in the middle and a good dollop of the raspberry. A little bit more. Now, I'm going to take every other corner and bring it to the middle. Kind of press into the middle. And you have a pinwheel. So we're going to put that on our baking sheet. This second one is a little bit easier. It's just called a pocket. Take our cream cheese again in the middle. And you know, use any, you don't have to use cheese. You can use just the pie filling. You can use any flavor pie filling, cherry, blueberry, strawberry, whatever you want. I just happen to love raspberry. Now, this one, we just bring all four corners to the middle, squeeze them together. And to ensure a good seal, I give it a little extra twist. And then that goes on our sheet. And those two need to rise for about an hour, hour and a half. So continuing on, now we're going to make some croissants. Everyone loves croissants. I'm going to take a bigger piece this time because I want to make a few more of these. Our goal here is to get a piece of dough that's long and approximately eight inches high because I have a little template here that I made out of some cardboard and that's going to be the shape that we want our croissant to be. So, leaving nothing to chance. Okay, I guess that's about, yep, yeah, that's about eight. Once in a while, slide it around, get some more of that flour underneath so it doesn't stick. And I've gone to about nine and a half, so I'm going to cut off a little bit on each side and square it off. want everything to be consistent and neat. And now, take our template. Now, if I had used all the dough and just made croissants, I probably would have made a dozen and a half. But we're doing just demonstration here today, so I'm going to get just four out of this. And we are going to use some of this dough, so you'll see in just a second. Let me put these over here. Now, one of the tricks in rolling croissant dough, the first thing you do is you make a slit at the base, about an inch and a half long, and then you hold it and just sort of gently start stretching. Now, 
take a piece of this dough, make a little bundle out of it, put it here at the, at the top of the cut. That's going to make your croissant a little fatter. And then you're going to roll so that the pulling out sideways, that's going to give you that nice wing. And don't roll these really tight, just roll them up so that the seam is down and then turn them in and put them on a sheet and you've got a pretty croissant. Do the rest of these. And like the rest of these, they have to go off and be covered lightly with either a piece of plastic wrap or a towel and let them rise for about an hour, hour and a half. And then I'll show you how to egg wash them and bake them. Now, these are plain. You could have put in some pieces of ham and a little bit of cheese before you rolled them up. You could have put in chocolate and make chocolate croissants, any flavor you want. Just experiment. So we'll be back in about an hour and a half. So if you wanted to also make a coffee cake, this one's really cool. And this would use approximately one half of the dough that you would make in a single recipe. And now we're going to roll this out. I'm going to bake this on a regular cookie sheet that's lined with um, parchment paper. So I don't want this to be any bigger than that piece of parchment paper or that cookie sheet. So, I've got my cookie sheet right here, and I'm kind of gauging how long. It's about the length. Now we need some width here. Now, one of the things you can do to make your life a lot easier finish rolling your dough on your parchment paper because otherwise lifting it up after we put a filling into it is going to make it a little bit more difficult. Now the sides can be a little bit longer, you don't have to care because you're going to roll, you're going to fold these in. Okay. Now I'm going to even this off. This side's all right the way it is I think. Well, maybe. Maybe just a little trim. Now, I'm just going to mark it in thirds. It's just for me. That has to come off. All right. Now, we're going to start cutting tabs all the way down. Now, the scoring that I did did not cut through the dough. It just gave me a guide so I could make all of my tabs about the same length. And then I'll follow through on the other side. these two top tabs, we're going to remove those. Same thing with the bottom ones. Just the last two. Now, that same filling that we used before in the Danish, we're going to use here. Put some in the middle. offset, not to the end, but all the way in that third. Okay. Same thing, I'm going to use the same pie filling, the raspberry, because I happen to have it. I don't want to waste it.
Now we take this top tab and bring it over. Same thing with the bottom one. And now we just start crisscrossing. And just gently press down so it stays there. And there you go. And we will put this on our baking sheet. And this too now needs to rise for an hour, hour and a half. So I'm going to take a break, clean up, and wait for these to rise, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how we finish them all. As you can see, we're ready to start baking. This is the fun part. Everything seems to have grown, as you can see. It looks great. I have here one egg white with a few drops of water, and I'm going to brush that on the croissants first. I'm going to bake those first, along with these two Danish. And you want to make sure you get everything covered up well. My oven is on. It's at 375 degrees. And these will take anywhere from, oh, 12 to sometimes 15 minutes. You want them to be a nice golden brown and flaky and delicious. And they will be. I can tell just by looking at them that they came out really nice. And now the Danish. Now the Danish, you can see the, the pinwheel, the center's coming apart. It's not sticking together, but you know what? It just goes to show that it's homemade, handmade. It's not made by some machine. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of sugar. So I have some of this crystallized sugar. I'm just going to add it on, not the croissants, because those are savory. A little bit on here. You could also, after these are baked, make a simple confection sugar milk icing, and that would be good. So I'm going to put these two pans in the oven. After five minutes, I'm going to rotate them because they're one wrap is higher than the other. And then we'll see how they come out. Time to check our Danish and our, and our croissants. Here are our Danish. Nice, big and puffy. Those are our croissants. And what I've done is I've also egg washed the coffee cake, and I'm going to put that in the oven right now. As you can see, I also made a few extra croissants from the leftover dough when I was waiting for everything to bake. So we're going to let these cool off, and while they're cooling off, I'm going to deep fry these donuts that we made. And I have my little fryer here, which is heating to 350 degrees. I have canola oil in here. I have some cinnamon sugar, which I'm going to use later, and a draining rack, and I have a chopstick, which is good for turning the donuts. Here are our donuts. Some of them are risen higher than others because remember I made three on camera and then later on I made the others. So those I will let those rise a little bit longer and I'll just take the nice big puffy ones and ease it off the paper. And if you can see, I don't know if you can, there's a lot of layers of dough, 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 dough. But anyways, this is going into the hot oil. And that's going to fry for approximately two minutes per side. And since I only have a little uh, fryer here, I'm only going to do one donut at a time. I can do the holes, you know, about four or five at a time. If you don't have a little fryer like this, don't fret. You can do this in a regular pot as long as you have a thermometer. You want to keep the temperature around 350. If it gets much higher than 350, these donuts will burn fast and they won't be really good. And they'll kind of deflate a little bit. If you don't have that, then maybe you have an electric fry pan, which is really good because you can probably do six, maybe even eight donuts at a time, and you don't have to use an awful lot of oil. Just try to keep enough oil in it so the donut is not sitting on the bottom of the fry pan. So I'm just going to keep my eye on this. I'm going to use my 
little chopstick to give it a flip in a minute. These are so good. The reason I made more of these, my family loves these. And <laughs> when they know that I'm making these, they're gone. Okay, give it a little lip. That looks delicious, and you'll see what I mean in a little while. And later on, when they've when I drain them, I'm gonna drain them on here, let them cool maybe three or four minutes, then I'm gonna roll them in the sugar. I don't want them to be cold. I need them to be a little bit warm when I put them in the sugar. And later on, when they cool down completely, I'll cut one of them open and I'll show you the different layers that we have created with all that flaky, flaky pastry. There you go, there's our first one out of the pot. See how much higher it is than a normal donut. Uh, let's do some of the donut holes. Those are kind of fun. Try to find the ones, the three that I did first. And you're going to see, these will show the, the layers much faster when I take them out of the oil. And uh, my son-in-law said these are much better than the donuts themselves. I don't know. I like both. The other thing is, is these tend to float a little bit more and they, they're harder to flip over. So sometimes I use my slotted spoon to kind of hold them down and immerse them in the oil. see all the ridges and I'll break one apart as soon as they're they're good enough to handle but they're just a little bit too warm right now now this has been a couple of minutes so I'm going to take this one do the sides roll it in the side down the bottom there you go now you can this is cinnamon sugar you can use just regular sugar. If you happen to have vanilla sugar, which is really nice, you can roll these in vanilla sugar. You can also inject these with pastry cream. You, you would put them in the sides in a couple of holes. But these donuts do not keep well. When you make them, five hours maximum, you've got to eat them. If you think you're going to make them the day before, no, they're not going to be good tomorrow. Trust me. We have tried it. Even though they don't usually last that long around here. We did it more or less for the experiment and they are not good the next day. We tried microwaving them the next day and making it a little warmer and they were okay. But right now and the next couple of hours is when they are at their peak. All right, let me see if I can break one of these open and show you what it looks like. You can see it breaks in flakes. See how flaky it is? Mmm, that's crunchy. So, I'm just going to keep on frying, rolling them in sugar. When everything's done, I'll bring everything out and show you all the finished products and show you how to cut one of these open. And we'll have a really great time. Well, Here's the fruits of our labor. We've got our donuts, our danish, our coffee cake, which I'm going to decorate, and then we have our croissants. These are the plain ones that I made on camera that you saw. And then I had the extra time off camera and some extra dough, so I made some ham and cheese croissants, which would be nice for a nice lunch. Now I'm going to decorate this a bit. I just mixed up some confectioner's sugar and a little bit of milk put it in a baggie and I'm just going to give this a little dressing coffee cake is still slightly warm so the frosting will probably melt a little bit but that's okay melting is delicious 
Now I'm going to cut into one of the uh, donuts that I promised you I would do earlier. So you want to use a serrated knife because this is very flaky and if you use a flat bladed knife it's going to compress it. So you want to just saw in motion to get all that crunchiness. And then when you open it up you can see all the layers of pastry. It's, it's really, really delicious and flaky. You can see how this flaked off too. So this is a great breakfast or brunch items. I've got my coffee. I'm all set. I hope you try them and enjoy them.